I now give the floor to the representative of South Sudan. Uh, Mr. President, allow me to begin by congratulating you and your delegation upon assumption of the presidency of the Security Council for the month of July. My delegation will render its full support. Since it is my first engagement with the Security Council as permanent representative of my country, I would like to assure the Council of my cooperation and support in tackling issues that pertain to my country. <coughs> Mr. President, on the outset, I would like to express my deep condolences to the UN peacekeeping force and personnel who lost their lives during the unfortunate event in Juba. I would like to inform the Security Council of the commitment of the transitional government of national unity to fully implement the agreement on the resolution of the conflict in South Sudan. The transitional government of the national unity remains on course to implement the agreement despite the numerous challenges we are facing. Mr. President, it is unfortunate to note that the few achievements of the transitional government of national unity have been severely impacted by the events of the last few days in South Sudan. Nevertheless, the transitional government remains committed to the implementation of the agreement and considers the setbacks as learning curve. Mr. President, as you are well aware, over the last few weeks, some major towns in South Sudan were attacked by unknown gunmen, which resulted in displacements and loss of properties and lives to many of our citizens. In Raja, the capital of Lal State, on 15 June, the house of the governor was attacked and the town was overrun by unknown gunmen before they were repelled by the SPLA. Wau, the state capital of Wau State, was attacked on the 24th of June, also by unknown gunmen. This council released a press statement which called for calm and restraint. The transitional government of national unity acted swiftly on both occasions to protect civilians and their properties. Human casualties were minimized and further loss of property was avoided through the imposition of curfew in the attack towns. Humanitarian access was allowed, unabated by the state governments and the new governors of the two states called for calm and asked the people to work together in getting to the root cause of what happened. Furthermore, the Transitional Government of National Unity formed an investigative committee under the chairmanship of His Excellency Dr. Riyad Gai Cook, the National Minister of Health. He visited WOW and his findings will be made public once completed. Mr. President, from the 7th to the 10th of July, Juba, the capital city of the Republic of South Sudan, and the seat of the Transitional Government of National Unity experienced the most difficult challenge to the peace agreement so far. On the 7th of July, 2016, at approximately 8.30 p.m., a force from the headquarters of the first vice president, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel David Riek, attacked a checkpoint at Gudeli, a neighborhood in Juba. The checkpoint was run by an integrated force from the SPLA and other organized forces. The attack resulted in the death of two SPLA soldiers, two national security personnel, and one medical doctor who was caught in the crossfire. On the 8th of July, His Excellency President Salveki Mayadi called the first Vice President, Dr. Riyag Machar, and the Vice President, Honorable James Wani Iga, for a meeting to discuss security situation 
and the shooting of the night before and to set up a committee to investigate the unfortunate incident. As the president was about to complete their meeting, the first vice president's huge protection force in 21 mounted vehicles accompanied by an ambulance in which ammunition were concealed arrived at the main gate of the presidential palace as response to a false breaking news posted by the press secretary of Dr. Yang Machar, Mr. James Gadet Dat, and I quote the false breaking news, Mr. President. Fighting erupted inside J1, President Salva Kiir's palace in the national capital, Juba. The president and his commanders attempted to arrest the first vice president, Dr. Riyang Machar Teng. This came after the president called for a meeting of the presidency in his office with Dr. Machar and Vice President James Wani Iga. This turned out to be a setup to arrest and possibly harm Dr. Machar. Fortunately, Dr. Machar's bodyguards have managed to fight vigorously and rescued Dr. Machar. He is now safe. Meanwhile, fighting has continued." Unquote. In the midst of all this chaos, His Excellency President protected and facilitated the safe passage of the first Vice President back to his residency. He at the same time constituted an investigation committee headed by the Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Alfred Ladogori. This is expected to report, the committee is expected to report back within the next 10 days. Mr. President, on the 10th of July at around 8 a.m., a force from the headquarters of the first vice president attacked and overran a checkpoint on Juba, Ye Road. The SPLF forces responded immediately, and, and a protracted fighting continued throughout the, throughout the day around the checkpoint area. The SPLF forces eventually regained control of the checkpoint. On the 11th of July, 2016, in the morning, the SPLM slash AIO forces attacked the checkpoint again, and this time they were repulsed and pursued into their camp, which they abandoned. Based on the above narrative events, His Excellency the President has reiterated his commitment to the continued implementation of the agreement in letter and spirit, and this and thus issued a Republican order for the cessation of hostilities with immediate effect from the date of signature as from 1800 hours GMT on the 11th of July. Mr. President, in conclusion, the transitional government national unity is only viable is the only viable mechanism to fully implement the agreement. We call on you to collaboratively work with the Transitional Government National Unity on how best we could together deliver peace and security to my people. We call on you to engage all parties to the agreement to double their efforts to implement this agreement to allow the people of South Sudan to start building a better future for their next generation. I thank you for listening, Mr. President. I thank the representative of South Sudan for his statement. I now invite council members to informal consultations to continue our discussions on the subject. The meeting is adjourned.